Hello everyone, Kanasa here and welcome back to Coming Home Redux. And in today's episode, basically I figured out the cargo variant of the buzzard that I sent up in the last episode. Well, it's not going to be very good for taking a huge amount of supplies and material kits and specialised parts up to the space station that I've got going on, the RSSI. And in order to fix that problem, I thought I would make some sort of autonomous drone kind of space base plane that will basically take, I think, about 40,000 material kits and 6,000 specialized parts per mission, which is going to be pretty good because in order to make some very large things in orbit, well, we are going to need to take a lot of those supplies up. So that's exactly what I am working on now in the vehicle assembly building. And this is going to be called the Wasp. I don't know why the Wasp. I think originally it kind of looked a little bit sharp, a bit sleek and I don't know, Wasp just screamed out at me, but it, it doesn't in its final iteration, so it might be something that I rename later on. Anyway, what I am going to be doing with this is I'm going to try and make the entire spacecraft reusable. Every single section of this craft will be able to be flown again. That is the idea. Whether that works, well, that remains to be seen because there were a lot of problems with this. And, well, this craft is a bit weird. It is a little bit strange in the fact that it takes kind of three separate spacecraft kind of from real life and brutalizes them <laughs> is the best way of saying it. So this upper stage, which we have now attached two of those wasps to, is a little bit like Starship in the fact that it, it looks a little bit like it and it's going to be, we're going to try and recover it. it. It's, it's, yeah, it's weird. It's kind of got those, those wings in that kind of shape and basically that is just so that I can glide it safely back down once we have achieved orbit. So that's the Starship component of this, and it's, it's not really like Starship, but it looks, a, it looks like an orange version of the Starship, I guess you could say. The actual wasps themselves, well, we're going to stick two of those on so that we've got symmetry running nicely up here and I don't have to off-center my engines or do anything like that, no. I can just keep them where they are and I can lift two at once. And being able to lift two at once, well, that is going to get those 40,000 material kits up to space. But they're, they're a little bit like the space shuttle, you know, we've got a shuttle on the side of a massive orange fuel tank, so, so that's the space shuttle. And I have just designed the bottom, the first stage as well, and I didn't talk about that whilst I was doing it, but it kind of looks a little bit like a Soyuz. So <laughs> I thought, yeah, we've got Soyuz, Starship, and shuttle all together in one mission. It looks more like a Soyuz now that I'm only going to be having four of these boosters on the side. And of course, because I do want this reusable, we are going to stick some landing legs on it and some air brakes at the top so that we can get a nice landing or I, I would like to hope. But anyway, we have now finished this and we are launching it for the first time. And unfortunately, once again, I forgot to auto strut everything. Yes, auto strutting is very important. So when I got out to the launch pad, the two wasps on the top started to bend a little bit and yes, they, they are now at a very weird, strange angle, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I did auto strut it and we didn't lose anything from this mission. Once again, we are going to bring up the multi-vessel tracking. I did have a few recommendations to improve this from the last episode, but I have not gone and done them yet because I have been stupidly busy with university. I've got three assignments coming up. I've got lectures all the time and I actually have to be in uni now. I'm, I'm on campus, so it takes me like an hour to drive to uni. So yes, I have pretty much nowhere near as much time to make these videos, which is why of course they are gonna be a bit shorter and yes, they're, they're, they're not as long as I would like them to be. But talking of these videos, the next, I've, I've kind of got an idea of where I want to lead the series over the next few episodes. So obviously we're faffing around with space planes again. It does seem to be something that I'm doing an awful lot of at the moment, but I'm just enjoying space planes. If I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm enjoying messing around with aerodynamics and all of that kind of stuff. But we did successfully land the booster, although because we landed it in the water, well, it kind of tipped over and broke. But anyway, plan for this series, what I want to be going on with for the next few episodes. I want to go into planetary with the Kerbals. Obviously, I did a live stream quite a while ago now, designing the first ever interplanetary craft that I want to use. And we've not seen that yet in the series because what I want to do is I want to set up a new orbital construction site and I did talk about doing a live stream about that in the last episode, and I still think I want to do that. But basically, we'll build this new orbital dockyard 
from the space station that we've got in low road orbit at the moment, the RSSI. I will use that to create the parts for the new space station and then at the new space station, which will be kind of more purpose built for building interplanetary craft, well, that's where we will build our ginormous, stupidly big interplanetary ship. It was very big. It had a lot of golden balls all running down the back of it. Yeah, down the sharp. It, it, was, it was big, it was big, and it should be able to get us interplanetary, which will be very nice. So that will be basically where this series is going to go for the next few episodes, I think, anyway. But after that, I do want to obviously start looking into putting some permanent surface bases down. Although, in order to do that, there is some more technology that I am going to need. I don't have any of the USI kind of major modules unlocked yet. I'm quite far away from doing that, so I'm hoping science gained from an interplanetary kerbled mission will get me the kind of science that I do need in order to perform that. And it'll be very nice. Anyway, the upper stage did not go very well. It did not fly great at all. So that is something that I am going to have to change. I'm going to go in and make a few new design choices with that upper stage to hopefully mean that it will fly a little bit better than it did in the first place. So with that being slammed into the surface of road at a rather fast pace, we are going to come back to the actual WASP spacecraft and see how this descends through the road atmosphere and if it performs any better than the upper stage. So far, this entire mission has been a bit of a bust. The first stage booster broke, the upper stage booster slammed into the ground, and now we're attempting to land the final part of the mission. So there, I did open up Hyperedit just so I could dump all of the remaining material kits and specialized parts because I figured if we were landing this for real, and I mean, this is real, there aren't sims in this series, well, it would be empty upon return to road. And unfortunately, yet again, well, it crashed into the ground. We weren't able to pitch up at all. And that led to, yes, us nosing down and eventually crashing rather hard. So what I've done is I have made a few changes to the parts of the mission that did not work. So the actual shuttles themselves, or the autonomous drones as I called them earlier, and the upper stage of the rocket has been. The wings have been slightly largened. I've moved the tail fins a little bit more, so hopefully your control should be a bit better, and it should be a bit easier to land that thing, and hopefully we don't go crashing into the surface. Anyway, we were able to successfully touch down with the first stage booster, but we landed on a slope and that meant that it tipped over and broke yet again. <laughs> not, not going very well with these first stage boosters in the slightest. No, everything is going pretty badly if you do ask me. But with that being done, we are going to come back and we are going to attempt to land the upper stage booster or the upper stage of this craft. And the slight variations that I made to it this time were a little bit better. But as we can see, we still start to spiral out of control. And the reason why I think this is, is because I have got roll enabled on both forward and backward sets of, of wings, or fore and aft, I think is probably the more correct terminology. And because of that, well, they're fighting each other and that makes us spin out of control quite badly. But because of that spin, well, I wasn't really able to fly that well through the atmosphere. And once again, we go slamming into the ocean. And with that being done, we're going to return to the new improved WASP space plane, which also has a little bit of an issue with roll control for whatever reason. And I did disable roll on, the, on this so that only one set of control surfaces were controlling the roll, but still, if I use Smart ASS, well, that thing, it doesn't work. Mech Mechjeb Smart ASS does not work to control these, so I had to use stock SAS. And still, we aren't able to pitch up with this design. The wings are too far back. It's nice and stable and it flies, but the fact that we can't nose up at all, well, that is pretty bad because we end up going straight into the surface of road. Obviously, we don't want to be doing that. We want to be touching down on our wheels so that we can safely recover this and reuse it again. So obviously there are two of the shuttles on one launch of this. So I thought we'd try and get the other one down, but that went even worse. I've got no control over this at all. I'm trying to pitch up as much as I can, 
and we do just end up screaming into the surface like a dart flying through and yeah it's it's not very promising so new iteration third design of this spacecraft and this time i have gone with two massive wings at the front and hopefully that should be enough <laughs> theoretically to get us to pitch up when we are coming through the atmosphere at least that's what i would like to think they center of lift and the center of mass of this the center of lift is much closer to the center of mass it's still behind so it still should be stable but it does mean that hopefully we will be able to nose up a little bit easier but we are going to come to our multi-view again and see if the booster is a little bit more successful this time once again though we are just slightly shy just slightly shy of the island in the the lake i, I guess it's a lake just off the coast of the space center. It's, it's not that far away from the space center and road. And yes, we're coming down in the water, which didn't end well last time, but we were able to come down slow enough this time that we managed to just plop ourselves in the water and nothing broke, which was very nice indeed. And with that, we were able to get the upper stage up to orbit as well. So what we're gonna do is we are going to undock those two, and then we're going to attempt to return the upper stage back home back back to the safety of the ground we're i've been trying honestly in this video i was trying to get to as close as the space center as i possibly could and using trajectories to try and get my trajectory pretty much directly over well that doesn't work that that means i do not end up by the space center and i end up quite a bit further obviously it's because i am gliding quite a lot of the way so I need to get my trajectory before the space center or at least that's what i think i am going to have to do and it is something that i will take into consideration next time i fly missions like this then hopefully we should get a bit closer because there we go we have just flown over the space center there and obviously we are still going 3,000 meters per second and yes <laughs> we, we we have overshot by quite a considerable margin yes my my targeted landings do leave a lot to be desired, but it is something that hopefully, like I did just mention, we can work on and we can get a little bit better. Once again, we do get a little bit of spin, but this is nowhere near as bad as it was before, and we are able to fly this quite well. That being said, though, this fuel tank is rather heavy, and those wings are rather small, so we kind of drop out of the sky like a lead balloon. Yeah, it's not good. The wings need to be bigger or I need to be coming in faster at those lower altitudes so I can perform a landing. But I am fairly sure that I will be able to do that. That we will be able to maybe kind of improve our trajectory when we do land. That means that we can actually land it successfully and it doesn't all break apart. Anyway, some of the bits did survive then. So it wasn't a complete failure. We, we kept like... I think maybe one of the landing legs <laughs> It's not much, but it was a lot better than before. As was this, the newest version of the Wasp. But unfortunately, I don't know what happened there. We obviously touched down a little bit too hard and it all broke, but we were able to nose up. We can fly this. This is now capable of being flown once we enter into the atmosphere. And it does look a little bit silly. I did really like the second design. Out of all of the designs that I did for this, there we go, flying over the space center again. Really need to work on that. This was by far my favorite. No, this was this was by far my least favorite. The second one was my favorite. I'm getting my words all mixed up. But of course, it has to work. If it looks good and it doesn't work, well then that's gonna be absolutely no use to me at all in this series. So it has to work and this one does. As we can see, we are now gliding down nice and slowly and we are able to touch down and slow the spacecraft down after a little bit of a hop. But that will be the end of this episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. In the future, we will be returning to orbital construction, but until then, I have been Karnasa, and I will see you later.